Hi, welcome to Wet Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of Wet Pixel, and I'm not Alex Mustard, although Alex Mustard is right here alongside. So um, Alex very kindly um, took over some episodes for us, which is great. Um, but I'm afraid I'm back. Um, and today we're going to talk about dome ports and specifically how we look after our dome ports um, and possibly how we repair our dome ports if they get damaged. Um, so I, when we were talking about this this topic, um, Alex and I, a while ago, um, I was reminded of a, of a picture I think I saw about some time ago of him actually washing out the inside of his big dome port with putting water on the inside of it. So I thought I'd start there, Alex. Alex, why do you wash the inside of your dome port? Well, it's not something... Hi, Adam, by the way. Um, Hi, it's, sorry, it's not Alex, something yeah. that I, I do every day. But ultimately, you know, when, you know, dirt, grime, dust starts to build up in there, it can be, and particularly if it's kind of like a, that, that sort of oily dust, mm. it can be quite difficult to clean it out. And actually, there are times when a bit of soap and water and then a good long dry particularly if you're on a trip somewhere like Egypt, you know, where it's a very dry environment, yep. it's a great chance to actually wash it out and get it really clean inside. Yep. Um, ultimately, you're not going to do any harm to it washing it on the inside. What you don't want to do is end up going diving with moisture in there. That's when you might get condensation and the problems that that, that can, can cause, either with complete dome, fo dome fogging up or just enough fogging that you start to get really bad internal reflections. Yep. But as long as you're not risking that, you know, it's there's nothing in there that's going to be harmed by washing it away. Nope. And it can be a good thing to, to give it a good clean. But for me, far more valuable than washing it is, is the preventative side of it. And I think I'd, I'd like to start there more than yep. anything. Yep. Is that particularly with a big dome port, you want to stop dust and things getting inside it. It's not likely to happen too much, obviously, on a dive. No. It can happen when it's attached to the camera and you end up maybe leaving the camera sort of face down on the table and you've taken the, the, the camera out of the housing to download yep. and you leave the back of the housing off. You'd be surprised how much dust can settle within within it then and drift all the way through into the dome port. Yep. But actually, uh, for me, the killer time is during storage and during travel. Yep. And that's why, certainly for me, the way I sort of store my dome is domes like this. It's one of my dome ports. Hmm. I always buy a pair of dome port covers, neoprene covers for Gosh, them. Yeah. This yeah, one's yeah. got different colored ones on so you can see them. Yep. So I've got the normal one on the front yep. and then I use a second one on the back. Yep. Now, it's good to have two covers for travel because actually quite often what often is when you go out on the boat is that your dome gets wet and it, the cover gets wet. Yep. And then actually the dome is nice and dry and then you keep having to put this wet cover on it and it smudges and smears it. Yep. There's nothing that's really lasting because it's on the outside and it will wash away yep. next time you go in. But it can be quite nice to have a second dry cover on your boat yep. so that you might have a situation where you've got a dry dome port but a wet primary dome port cover. You might, you know, having a second one along is yep. good for that. So it's good for sealing both the front and the back of the dome when you travel. So you can put one on forwards, one on backwards, yep. and it, it, it fits the dome really nicely. And it gives you a spare when you travel. And then the other thing that I keep on my domes during that period as well is if I just pull off this rear rear one, you, you'll see it, um, is that I have a rear port cap on the back, which both covers the, the, the opening into the into the dome port, but it also covers the O-ring. So it stops the O-ring getting grimy during travel and just picking up dust and, and debris. Yeah. And it stops that dust and debris going inside the dome. Yeah. These little things do cost a bit, but they do also last forever. Yeah. So I don't tend to use them on the flat ports. I, if money was no object, I would but I've, I've only got a couple of them and I just tend to keep them for the, the big dome ports and that sort of thing. When the dome port goes on the camera, it, this then goes on whatever port is, is sort of being taken off the camera. Yep. So during the trip, it helps keep that uh, the other O-ring and the other port clean. Yep. So that's quite a... Um, a, a I, I really like the, the two, um, the two uh, neoprene cover idea. I think that's a really good idea. Um, yeah, and, and actually it was more that actually I started doing it. And I have to say, when people have lost them on trips, it is also quite nice to be able to say... Well, you can borrow my spare cover because yeah. actually they're a thing that blow off the side of boats or get lost. And people, as, people, as with all my stuff, is covered in my name as well. Um, yeah. the dome port covers are the thing that you know everyone's always like, Is that mine? Is that yours? So, yeah, the more distinctive you can get them, the better. People often, um, either don't take them off before they get in the water or mistakenly get in the water with them. And then oftentimes that's, you know, they take them off and put them somewhere. The classic I see is running, putting them up their sleeve and then it floats mm. off and, and, and they lose them. So, yeah, I mean, they're quite a common thing that gets gets misplaced during a trip. Um, yeah, I think that depends a little bit on the style of diving that you're doing. Yep. If you're in, you know, very good conditions with a very good boat crew, very safe in and out the water, 
definitely I always take my dome port cover off and leave it on the boat. Yeah. But I think if the entry and exits to the water are, are treacherous, yeah. whether it's a shore dive or a boat dive where you might be rough or the, yeah. the boat's not well designed for cameras, it can be a good idea to dive with that dome port cover. And, you know, once you finish your safety stop, and there's no more photography possible, then put the dome port cover on underwater. I mean, so then I think times when I, I dive with the dome port cover on my arm or in a pocket yeah. so that I can put it on at the end of the dive. Yeah. Or carry a clip for it. It's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so I've got some, um, I've got some, some of the bags from, um, um, city bags underwater. And yeah, um, those, those are really nice. These, are, these are great for travel with, I mean, particularly big dome ports. So this, this is a, a is a, is a big, super dome um you know it's a great big dome it's a great big lump of glass um, it's obviously relatively delicate and easily damaged um, and you stick it in this this bag it's protected um it normally travels with its dome port cover inside it as well I've got that in as well um and off it goes in my bag and packs in my bag they're, they're a great idea for traveling with um, they're also a really nice neat little bag for taking you know if you've got your dome port on your camera yeah. it's a great neat little bag to take on the boat say yeah. a macro port and a macro lens yeah um, you know, wrapped up in there, and then when the dome port comes off, it can go back in the bag, yep. and those two go on so, the camera. Or spare batteries, or any of the other little yeah, bits and pieces that you like to really keep at arms with. bags on a trip. Yeah, they're great. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the areas that dome port covers become more troublesome is actually on mini domes. Yes, because a lot of mini domes don't have the space around them for these wrap around neoprene covers. Yeah, and sometimes you get those kind of little skull cap covers, yep. which are designed to instantly fall off. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And I think the best solution with mini domes is to then use a rigid plastic cover. Um, some manufacturers make them. Yep. That's a nice one you've got there. So, is that a C-CAM one? So this is the C-CAM one. This is the C-CAM close focus wide angle port. It's actually it's actually in two pieces. It's a little bit hard to make out on the back. So there's the dome. And then you've okay. got a sleeve that goes over like that. And then there's a cover that goes on top. But yeah, I mean, it's rock solid um, and it doesn't come off. It stays put. Um, and you know that's a quite a nice solution. I know people have improvised these from from plumbing fittings and stuff in the past. You just got to get the right size. Yeah, um, I remember when the first sort of you know popular four inch mini domes really came, came onto the market. There was loads of chat on the wet pixel forums about which plumbing accessory was best yeah, and everyone should right, be yeah. using them. And um, <laughs> yeah, that, but actually, that they're actually a better solution than neoprene on those small domes. And, and they make, they're really strong, really easy to take off and easy to throw back onto the boat when you jump in the water with them. And, and so, some yeah. manufacturers, certainly obviously you showed you the Seacam one, but this is this is actually a designer bespoke cover, not a plumbing part, um, mm. made by Nauticam for the WWL1. Um, mm. And it's got the, the sort of pinch release, like a, like a lens cap, um, which fits into the two shades on the WWL1. Um, and again, that's a really nice, solid, you know, it's a solid solution. I have to say, it's not the cheapest solution. And, and certainly when I bought my WWL, I had to buy it in addition to the lens. Um, but but still, it's, you know, it's a really nice accessory for, mm. for, the, for the, compared to the cost of the lens, I guess it's relatively small money. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yep. So um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was, was cleaning the port domes particularly when they get dirty on the inside but the same with flat ports although i do if it comes to it wash them on the inside generally i do try first of all to clean them with with, with a cloth first of all mm. ideally a nice lens cloth would do or a sunglasses cloth like, like mm. these um a lot of manufacturers are quite generous when you buy a dome they give you cloths as well to clean them with yeah. um i have to say mine gets clean more often with a t-shirt um more because of it, it's around than anything else um and maybe that's why I need to resort to using water. Every day. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah um, but, but keeping that dust free is, is really valuable. It will, it will um, you know, it is an important part of your optical process. It's as important as keeping your lens clean. I was keeping the inside of that. I was going to say Alex recommends personal, but no, I won't say that. Yeah. Um, so, so um, I think something else to bear in mind when you're cleaning the inside of your dome port, you need to be slightly careful with this because the inside of the dome port, most dome ports has, has an anti-reflective coating um, and it is possible mm. to scratch and damage that coating. And, and that anti-reflective coating is designed to prevent reflections from your front of your lens. So things like the, the writing on the lens so on and so forth from, from appearing in your images as a reflection. Mm. So, so be careful about using anything that might scratch the inside. I mean, obviously that's, hopefully common sense, but be aware there is a coating inside there. And, and you know, you want to use um, relatively gentle cleaning mm. methods. Certainly water's fine because it is gentle, um, mm. but but don't start using um, very, very coarse or anything abrasive, obviously, because you potentially yeah. could damage that internal coating. Mm. If you are struggling with those internal reflections, 
remember there's a couple of things to do. First of all, you can take a black marker pen and, mm. and fill in those re things that are reflecting, particularly if they're letters, yeah. on the front of the lenses. Some lenses even have them around the edge of the, the, le yeah. the, um, the front element of the lens. Yeah. And that can be really, you know, can really help minimize things. Yeah. You can also buy telescope flocking material, which is used for telescope hoods very cheaply. And I know people have used that quite extensively inside their housings. Yeah. The people, the one thing that does catch some people out with some systems is if you're running a pop-up flash, people do sometimes get leakage from the flash coming through, which is actually the reason why they're getting internal reflections. It's yeah. not the sun coming in and reflecting off the lens. It's actually that pop-up flash firing light through the system yeah. and creating that, yeah. that effect. So just remember that, you know, actually there may be another reason behind it and make sure something like that isn't actually the cause of it. And you spend all this time with a black marker pen and flocking material, and actually all you needed was a proper blocking of the light from the pop-up flash. A couple of the manufacturers actually produce like a ceiling disc that fits around, I think it fits around the lens and then dovetails into the inside of the housing to try and prevent that from happening. So so yeah, definitely definitely a possible solution, yeah. Um, hours of fun with your black fine liner. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, well, I, I remember actually in one of the wet pixel shark trips, I had these kind of silvery metallic fins and they were fine with all the sharks in the Bahamas, but we were doing a dive with dusky sharks, which we weren't really used to diving with. And they went mad for these fins. And after one dive with them, I came out the water and sharpied my entire fins. <laughs> I'm not wearing those fins with those sharks again. Anyway, um, that's an aside. Um, I know the other thing that you wanted me to talk about was, was dealing with scratches, particularly on acrylic dome ports. Yeah. Um, both acrylic and glass dome ports work really well underwater. Yep. Um, acrylic dome ports have the advantage of being lighter for travel, considerably so, yep. but it's a much softer material than glass and therefore it scratches more easily. Yep. So people with acrylic ports, generally it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're going to get a scratch. And it's something that you want to be prepared for and be prepared to deal with. Yep. Um, because I think particularly the process of polishing a dome is quite a nerve wracking one. Yep. Because in order to polish a scratch out of a dome, whatever system you use to polish it out, you have to go through a period where you, your dome looks completely ruined. You need to grind that outer layer down and you can only grind that down by using a coarseness of, of grinding material. You know, you're still using very fine sign papers, but a coarseness, that's gonna make it completely opaque and able, and able to see the dome in order to, to, to go through the dome far enough to get that scratch to out. get the base of the scratch, yeah. 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 Um, glass domes, scratches in those are much harder to repair. And I was gonna start with that actually, in that generally I would look to replace glass once the scratch gets really bad. A lot of scratches in glass domes don't show up too badly when you're underwater, yeah. or they might just really show up in very certain situations like shooting into the sun. Yeah. And you're, you're gonna have to make a call on how big an issue that is for you and how much it's worth. But most dome manufacturers, do offer rates to replace the glass in the yeah. dome. It's usually kind of two thirds the price of a new dome. Yeah, it's yeah. not a cheap thing to do, but yeah. it's it's at least a third less than a new dome. Yeah. Um, I have tried this polish on domes with with some success. Bring it a bit over, never further over, Alex. Main domes. So. This is a glass polish. It's yeah. called Nanotech glass polish yeah. um, by by G Tech, and it, you know it, it does work a little bit. And certainly if you're desperate and it's, it's, it's been or replaced, then something like this might be worth a try. Mm. But polishes on acrylic domes work really well. Polishes on glass domes, in my experience, are very hard to do. Yeah. And I know I've heard people saying that, you know, you can try really strong abrasive methods like using a, a drill-based sander on glass domes. There's a risk that the dome might crack, but ultimately you're dealing with something that's going Damage in the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, acrylic domes, for me, there's kind of two ways that I might polish them out but they're both basically doing the same thing. They're grinding down the outer surface so that you, you grind through it. It becomes opaque when you do that because you're using a, a relatively coarse grinding material. Yeah. And then you slowly then polish it back up to being completely smooth and clear and see-through. Yeah. Um, the one I actually favor is probably the less common of the two. I really like the Novus polishes that Icolite sell. Yeah. Um, Icolite sell them in, in a little box like this. Yeah. Um, there's a part number on there. And you actually, this is one I travel with, and you actually get the three polishes inside and, and, and some paper to work with them. Yeah. Um, I also have the, the big boxes, which, is, which I kind of keep, keep at home, because typically this is maybe something I do in between trips, you know, if I have a critic dome yep. that needs, needs work. Now, they come in orders of, of, 
of, of coarseness. So for really nasty scratches, you need to get this stuff on it. Three, it's a yeah. liquid with, with basically sand inside it. Yep. And with your, your polishing material, you make those circular movements yep. over the dome, all the way over it. Don't just focus on the area where the scratch is in. That's the really important thing is you need to work that home, whole dome. This is not a tutorial on how to do it. There are There's a really good ones online and we're not going to get into that whole thing. But you, what you want to do is you want to work the whole surface and evenly. Yeah. And then once you've gone through to the point that the scratch has disappeared, yeah. the whole dome will look completely fogged on the outside. You then go to the, the next polish down in the list, and then finally you finish with, with, the, with the finishing one. Yeah. A lot of people travel with this finishing one as a great way of keeping their dome looking really immaculate on a trip. Yeah. I know people who swear by this as being a great way of keeping an acrylic dome good for split levels as well. So it's, it's a quite a handy thing to keep. To I've actually used it for cleaning glass domes as well. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just a really, it gets a really clean finish on glass domes as well, yeah. yeah. And then the other method is to use a pack of micro mesh sandpaper, um, which is again nice. It's probably slightly lighter and smaller to travel with. Yeah, really easy to buy a pack of this. And this is a pack of sandpapers, all of which are very, very fine. You know, they all feel almost like just paper to run your finger over. Yeah. And again, you start with the coarsest ones and work your way to the, the thinnest ones. Yeah. I have to say, the one thing I've learned from all of this is, I, I don't know how bad I have enough in the middle, it's my micro mesh pack that I travel with. Yeah. Um, the one thing I've learned from all of this is, it's a lot easier to do this with someone else's dome than your own, because you're not emotionally involved. When it's your own dome, you're stressing, you don't think, clearly. with someone else's dome, you can just sit there chatting to people, going, good dive, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, yeah. next paper. <laughs> and you're much more chilled out about it, and you're generally going to do a better job. When it's your own dome, you're going, oh, my God, my trip's ruined. Oh, my God, my trip's ruined. Yeah. And, you, and you don't do as good a job with it. Yeah, so yeah. if you do scratch your dome or someone on a trip scratches your dome, potentially offer to help them. You'll probably do a better job than they would. And also, if you scratch your dome, maybe go Get to someone else. else to make it a, a lot easier to, yeah. to work through things. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, before you try and polish out a scratch, do a dive to see how bad it is yeah. because a lot of the time they do fill with water and you'd, it's best just to leave them for the trip and get them sorted out afterwards. A number of people um, with lots of experience offer dome polishing, dome cleaning services post-trip. So I, if you don't need to scratch, if you don't need to polish it out, leave it till the end of the trip. I was going to say it's a relatively time-consuming process too. So so it's not, not something you kind of want to try and do slip between dives or something it's you want to you want to sit down on an evening and have a go at it rather than try yeah. and do it you know so so again you know it, it it's something to chill out and and um, and do it while while enjoying a, a beverage or something of an evening rather than yeah uh, yeah brushing and it's it between dives. very much you know you don't need to be looking all the time as long as you've got that nice circular motion yeah um and you work the whole whole whole, whole surface perfect um thank you very much alex um lots of great information there um um Obviously, um, I'm, I, we, we, I imagine we're fairly familiar with Alex's um, we, um, website, but how about Instagram? Have you been busy on Instagram recently, Alex? Uh, no, I've been useless on social media recently. I've, um, I've not been doing much at all. I've not even had a chance to get processing pictures. I've been busy with other work. So I tend to post on Instagram when I'm processing pictures, and um, yeah, I've not been near Photoshop or Lightroom for a little while. But so you can follow me on there at, at AlexMustard1 or on Twitter at Alex underscore Mustard. Both of those, I'm quite active about posting stuff most of the time. Just, just so, not, not so that was a big poke from Alex to get on and get some more pictures up there. I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's episode, which was Silly Bags Underwater. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, please feel free to give us a like if you enjoyed it. And feel free to add comments about your experiences of uh, keeping your domes in tip-top uh, condition in the comment section. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.